So once the judge has done everything she can to get all the information that's relevant, hearing from the victims, hearing from the accused, hearing from maybe a probation officer who might prepare a pre-sentence report, and looking at what the law says about how severe this crime is and looking at this person's criminal record, if they have one, the judge now has to sentence the offender and has to figure out which options for sentencing she should use, because there are many of them. Sometimes she might combine them. Uh, and we'll look at each of them in turn. We'll start off with discharges, and then we'll look at fines, suspended sentence with probation, prison, which can come as a one day of jail. We'll explain what that is. Conditional sentence of imprisonment, which uh, may sound pretty familiar to those of us serving curfew right now in uh, the pandemic. Federal or provincial sentences, are, uh, there's a little point I'll talk to you about on that. And then we'll also look at par parole considerations, special designations, and credit for time served. So, discharges, what are these things? Uh, it's not contrary to the public interest Then a judge is supposed to look at a crime that you've committed. And if it isn't particularly serious, it's your first time being found guilty of an offense, the judge might consider giving you a discharge. And a discharge technically doesn't even count as a conviction on your record. It can be an absolute discharge or a conditional discharge, which has a probation order that's attached to it that kind of disappears after three years. Now, why do these happen? These are generally requested by people who uh, don't have a criminal past, who maybe are there somebody in the community who, let's say somebody who runs her own business and uh, is able to convince a judge, look, considering the public interest, uh, it's very important for me to be able to rec represent my company uh, abroad. If I have a conviction, I won't be able to travel to the United States. If you give me a criminal conviction, all of the people who work for me are likely to lose their jobs. Uh, and I'm very, very sorry for what happened. So please, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Judge, can you please consider giving me a discharge? So if it's in the public interest and if the judge decides that it's in your interest, then the judge can give you one of these, which is effectively just saying, well, all right, you're able to go free this time, but don't do it again. And often people, most of the time when people get discharges, they do not reoffend. Um, now, if they do, then the next most severe step up is actually technically not a fine, a fine technically according to the Supreme Court is considered more serious than probation, but you talk to most people who have had criminal records and most of them consider probation to be a lot more onerous than a fine. So what a fine is essentially money that you have to pay. Uh, now when you're fined by a judge, it's actually very important for the judge to consider your ability to pay. A judge isn't supposed to administer a fine that you're never going to be able to pay because if you don't pay the fine, then the government can actually request of another judge to uh, issue a warrant of committal and say this person was supposed to pay a fine in connection with a criminal case, did not pay the fine, please put them in jail, effectively serving the fine uh, through minimum wage in time in jail. Uh, they can also do other things like suspend your driver's license. Uh, they can seize your property as well to try and get that fine paid off. Uh, and if you're in a situation where uh, the judge maybe didn't adequately consider your ability to pay the fine, because usually because you tried to convince the judge that you could pay a fine even when you couldn't, then there is an option to do community service in a lot of provinces. There's a program in place where you can do community service to try and work off your fine uh, and get rid of it that way as well. Now, if fines don't work, then a judge might consider going to a suspended sentence. Most of, most people aren't even aware that they have suspended sentences under Section 731 of the Criminal Code. When you get a suspended sentence, most people who, are, who have criminal records will talk about, well, I just got probation for it. They don't even really know what a suspended sentence means. Technically, a suspended sentence is the judge is saying, well, I'm going to hang on to sentencing you. I won't sentence you right away. I'm going to have it hang over you that uh, there's a possibility that if you reoffend, then I can actually bring you back in front of me, the judge, again and drop this hanging suspended sentence on you and resentence you for your earlier crime. Now, this is all the, the provisions for this are all in the criminal code. Technically, it, it could happen, but it just never does. Instead, what happens is uh, if you have, you have a suspended sentence with a probation order that a judge has issued and you commit another crime, then the next judge will sentence you for the new crime, but will also sentence you for a breach of probation as a way to punish you for not living up to the promise or uh, that the judge uh, gave you this opportunity to prove yourself. That's what the word probation means. It's like proving. So a judge gives you a probation order so that you have a chance to prove that you're not as bad as it looks like you are. And if you don't succeed in doing that, the next judge hammers you for breaching probation. 
Next up, uh, some details about what probation orders can actually include. There are some that have to appear in every single probation order. Every single probation order uh, includes a provision that you have to keep the peace and be of good behavior, which is really just there so that anytime you commit a crime while on probation, you're breaching this condition. And so they can point to this condition and say, this guy breached his order by doing something he wasn't supposed to do. Uh, but there are also other ones that a judge can include. A judge might throw on a, a provision that you have to do a certain number of hours of community service. Uh, there may be conditions on there to stop you from doing things that maybe caused you commit the crime in the first place, like you might have a provision there to abstain from consuming alcohol, uh, not be in bars, uh, not communicate with certain people that you associated with and committed crimes with in the past, participate in a treatment program. If you say, I really want to do this, a judge will consider that. judge isn't supposed to prohibit you from consuming alcohol if you're an alcoholic alcoholic and have no hope of actually respecting that condition. But what you'll see all the time in courtrooms is people saying, yes, yes, please, please, uh, please give me probation. I promise I won't drink. Just don't throw me in jail. And the judge says, really, really, you really think you're going to be able to not drink? It kind of seems like you're an alcoholic. And the person says, no, 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 really, please, I, uh, I can I can do it. I can do it. And they're saying this because they don't want to go to jail. Uh, and so the judge issues the probation order, and sure enough, uh, this person does have a severe problem with alcohol and finds themselves in a position where uh, they're drunk in public and breaching their probation order. Prison is what we tend to think of uh, when we talk about sentencing, but it's actually not supposed to be uh, the go-to option. It's really supposed to be the last line of defense for judges. They're supposed to figure out if anything else can be done but once it's been shown that somebody uh, has not benefited, is the language judge will use, benefited from previous non-prison sentences, then the judge comes down to saying, okay, we're actually going to hit this person with a sentence of imprisonment. And then once they cross that bridge into uh, sentencing you to prison, then a whole array of possibilities opens up. And I'll talk about that in the next video.